hi you guys i am showing you the route that my keithy was taking to document and to show you and it's like 100 degrees out here so i'm out here this is chatsworth this is a street i'm gonna show you a view and i'm going to flip the camera in a second and show you where keith was driving so you can see that he did not just drive off the road himself anyway this is called the soto boulevard and you can see it behind me hi you guys i'm out here you can see um the sun is blaring so this is DeSoto, and Keithy would have been coming up the street like these cars, and he was on this side of the street. So I'm going to walk you. He crossed through here. I believe he was in the second lane, but I'm gonna I'm gonna flip. I wonder if I can flip the camera around. I want to actually show you like I'm driving on this flat road where it happened, and I'm also documenting this um, because people keep asking me, so I'm documenting it. And I've just been up and down the street leaving flyers for um, people to call in. So, hi, you guys. All right, I'm gonna show you the route that Keith was taking up until the cross. I'm gonna show you where he hit, where he slammed into the mailbox and then et cetera. The reason I'm showing you again is because I get a lot of emails um, and we have a meeting with the police tomorrow and I may have to get a lawyer, et cetera, if things don't work, but I'm giving everybody a chance so I just want you to notice how flat the road is. How flat the road is. It's this flat, okay? So it's, Keith was coming literally from a mi half a mile down that way. I'm gonna flip the camera now and then I'm gonna show you. So we're gonna walk. Well, I'll talk to you a bit more. Apparently he was fine coming up here. So you can see the cars, it's a flat road. It's got awful hot. It's like weirdly hot out here. I've just been up and down the street leaving um, leaving uh, notifications for people to call me. I've talked to these neighbors on this side. Um, the guy with the black mailbox, he is the one eyewitness. Um, I don't know that I believe the story completely, but um, yeah, exactly. But nobody saw anything, right? Yeah, I'm on the side of the street. Yeah, they do go. So anyway, I'm basically filming as I go. So I'm gonna show you what happened. Somewhere along the road, the guy in this mailbox right here, this house, said he saw Keith riding, now let's just pay attention to this, on this white line right here, as in there's the curb. And there's the white line. So somehow Keith was over here or he was just riding on the side of the curb for no reason going 50, which would not be the case. Um, so anyway, you can see the road's still flat. I'm on a sidewalk thing. So the road's flat, 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 flat. And then this is where Keith started to go off the road was somewhere right here. I'm gonna turn it around, I'm gonna show you how far he traveled. So now I'm gonna put it on the mailbox that he took down. They've replaced the mailbox, but, so you can see he came off the road and basically went up here like this, on this side of the mailbox. His bike continued, continued somewhere here. It got airborne. And he continued all along here, went up through, these bushes basically hit this pole right here, came through, came through the trees and landed right here. You can see the cross and I'm going to flip it around. You can see the cross and if you look right behind me, you can see the oil stain from the bike. So Keithy landed here and the bike was there. He traveled that 180 feet after running into that mailbox and didn't get off. So I just want you to take a look at the street. Like literally, I'm gonna turn it on the streets. So you can see how flat it is. So you can see it's a straight, flat street. So the first officer on the scene 
it was first reported on Citizens app as no, he didn't. He definitely didn't. He hit that pole I showed you. I just put the I put the sign there. His bike hit right under it. Um, but you know, I'm just saying. I mean, it's not even a mom talking. It's just logical. Why did he run off the road there? It's pretty freaking flat. Yeah, no, I'm going to have to do that. The first, it was first reported on the Citizens app. All over the valley is a hit and run. And I can't find the people who posted that. I've been trying to do it on the Citizens app on July 29th. Um, anyway, um, we've done that. And then the first officer said no 30 minutes, well, no, 40 minutes after the accident, actually, that it was... Um, a single bike accident or single vehicle accident and then when I went there and reported that the lady across the street that re tried to resuscitate him Melody she told me that there was a white um, car that stopped and said I'm sorry I didn't see him so they opened it back up as a hit and run but you know it's like very strange we're not getting a lot of hits on that right now um, I do have tape, though, of a car stopping, like, literally right by the, the mailbox right down. I'm pointing ahead of me. You can't see. Anyway, um, that's where it happened. You can see how flat, how flat. And thank you for putting flowers, okay? Thank you so much for doing that. Whoever, I saw that go by. I'm like, somebody put flowers? Um, when you look at it, you can see, I mean, yeah, this is a fucked up road. Very fucked up. They just, it makes me jump. Very fucked up road. But you can see it's flat. He's not going to make that error. His brother's ridden up and down this road the entire like time trying to see how he did it. And there's no way that, that I mean, you have to be completely crazy to, um, I don't know, crazy. There could have been something wrong with the bike too because he just got it out of the shop. We haven't investigated that. So you can see on the ground, somebody, oh, where are the headphones? Somebody tried to steal these headphones off of Keithy's Cross. <laughs> When Deanna and I were here, I'm like, put those back, buddy. It was some, that weird Cyclops guy. Anyway, um, yeah, so it, it's interesting. Just look at the road. But again, he's starting from the mailbox back there, like I showed you. So it doesn't make sense. But I'm putting this on here to document it so that when people ask me what happened, because um, people keep emailing. So I want you guys to know that, oh, God, bad lighting. I want you guys to know that. It was a pretty flat road. You can see how flat the road is. There's no need to run off the road. And the one eyewitness who story changed quite a bit said that Keith was riding on this white line right next to this curb. So you can see it's about two feet like that right there. He said Keith was deliberately riding up that line. I think what that guy saw is somebody pushed him off the road. That's what I think. I don't know. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. And... These people were very nice. This little lady, um, the Buddhist monk. It's a Buddhist monk place here. So you can see. You can see the temple and see all of that right there. But yeah, you can see, the, I mean, the road's pretty flat. He ended up starting at that white mailbox and then he ended up hitting like literally right here. So he wasn't off the bike. He couldn't get off the bike from there to there. So what pushed him off the road? Something pushed him off the road. Yeah, I'm going to have to hire a, an accident re uh, reenactment person. We've taken pictures um, because the police initially decided within 30 minutes that, you know, oh, there goes one of the trucks we're looking for right there. See that white one? There it goes right down there. That's on one of the videos that somebody caught. Two of those, actually. Transport trucks going up and down here. One of them was pulled over just in front of the cross before anybody got to Keith. So they know, and I suspect they know something. Um, if it wasn't them, maybe it was somebody else. Yeah, no, I won't stop, you know that. Or I'm completely in denial, but I don't feel like I'm in denial. I feel like I'm being pushed to do it. So I'm gonna do it. Um, yeah, so you can see. And he was going right up there. Let's see, look at the, right up there. And the 118 is right up there. So that's where he was going. Um, that's where he was going. He was catching the 118 to go home. So you can see that from that white mailbox to this pole, to this tree, he landed here and separated from the bike here. Something pushed him off and up he came. And he came on the inside of the mailbox too, not, not 
necessarily um not necessarily around it from the roadside he literally was like up the hill and went off so we have been up and down the street Deanna always comes with me up and down the street she comes with me so that I can keep track of things and because I can't always pay attention to things but when you look behind me you look all the way over there and then you see you'll see the mailbox in a second he literally somehow ended up on the inside here taking off that whole mailbox and then ending up way over there so and it's a pretty freaking flat street it makes no sense but that's what they say happened. They just think he went off this very flat street. Initially, they said that. Now they're opening. I know. I know. I know. And the, again, the one witness, we're going to walk past the black mailbox, said he was fixing his bike on the driveway. And he just saw Keith on that white line like a nut. You know, no reason. And then he, he said when Keith got here, he just lost control. Something's not right about that. But... Who am I to say that? I just keep going up and down the street. Um, just because I have to. So this guy in the black mailbox, this he was the one eyewitness, which was really <laughs> weird. Um, very, very weird. And Deanna and I put our signs back up right here. We put two right here outside of that house because sometimes, sometimes, when people make up stories about witnessing an accident because they tell multiple stories, maybe they have a reason or maybe they just want attention. I don't know, but whatever that's about, I don't know. So we, anyway, this is what happened. I kind of think maybe somebody turned out of this little area and turned into him and kind of ran him off probably where that first white mailbox is. That's my instinct. And he was trying to um, regain control somewhere along there. So I can't stop myself from doing this. So I thought I would document it on the camera so you guys could see, but I want you to see, oh God, shade. It's so fucking hot out here. Um, there's the road, like literally look at this road. He was coming from that way and look straight up there. Please tell me why he went off the road here. Why? Cause he can't ride a bike. I think he can ride a bike. I've seen him ride a bike. He's good. So there's the flat road. So I want you guys to see the flat road, the flat road. So yeah, to make me, and then there was another bicyclist, motorcyclist, biker, person, kid, 26, who was on the street behind here, also a flat road coming from the same shop and died on the side of the curb again. So there's three of them in the last month, which is really weird. One guy was a bit older. So yeah, it doesn't make sense to me, but I thought I would show you guys is just like my flat clear visible road no potholes really well maintained unlike i know that's what i'm trying to say see just, just pretend here we go it's like saying one of those cars would drive off the road so i wanted to document it so i have it um that's what i wanted to do this is a side street. Had it been a school, the crosswalk would have been covered for the school kids. But I've been up and down, up and down, up and down. Anybody with a camera, I talked to a nice little girl down there. I just made some, um, some flyers and put them in envelopes and stuck them under people's doors because everybody's doing construction. There's a lot of construction trucks here and a lot of that. So, you know, there's that. Let's see, oh my God. I'm gonna go back again because I'm obnoxious. Um, <laughs> I'm not losing my mind. I'm doing this because I am. I just want to show you guys again. I'm going to walk it again, just so you know. So weird. Some people are writing me. They're like, you're losing your mind. I'm like, no, really, I'm not. I just want to know what happened to Keith. I know he's dead. I just want to know what happened to him. Um, if you can tell me what happened to him, people can rest, rest easy. Speeding guy. Speeding guy. Okay, so I'm gonna go down here again. So I'm just well, I'm walking the same route, and like I'm on the side of the road, and you can see there's a curb here, so nobody's gonna be riding here, like like biker guy said, because like it's right on the fucking curb. Why would you do that? Um, yeah, it's like 90 something degrees. <laughs> oh, it's like 90 degrees. 
really fucking hot. It was hot. It was, I think the day he passed, it was like 105 or something. Um, but anyway, when you look, and I want you to look, because the witness is at this black mailbox, so I'm going to walk the road. Oh, I'm going to turn it around so you can see. So apparently Keith is still just on the right side of the road here. This house, they told me in here it was hit and run. The guy was by the gate, told me it was hit and run. Um, you're gonna see this white mailbox. This is apparently where he went off the road, but he went over the curb. So, and he went up like this. Keep in mind while I'm walking, he's still on the bike. He's not off the bike. He went through these gardens, ended up right here where the sign is. I put the sign where he actually hit the pole, right here. Apparently he hit this pole and you can see the marks on the ground, separated from the bike. Again, landed right there and you can see the bike staying up ahead. So. What pushed him that 180 feet? What happened? I'm sure once he reacted, he probably tried to like stop the bike or do the brakes or whatever, but that's a long fucking way to travel. And you can see the, the gasoline thing on the road. If you look, if you look, I don't know, it's over there. It's, that's from the bike. So his body was like here and the bike was over there. So that's where he separated somewhere in here so I am looking for anybody yeah I'm looking for anybody in Chatsworth on DeSoto July 29th um oh somebody had to uh, please how are you running off the fucking road here it's ridiculous um no the bike his body has the marks on him so I hired a um he was taken to the corner and I hired a forensic photographer once we got him to the crematorium to take my own pictures um, that I will never look at but I have them because the coroner when he was sent there was not um, I don't think she was told it was a hit and run at the time because they changed it so I mean she's going to take pictures of the mark it was a she coroner I don't actually know look at his body but um, she's actually you know they're going to take pictures of the marks but I wanted my own documentation which I will never look at and it's in the safe deposit box um, so I found one of the three people in Los Angeles, I mean, in California that do it. And the guy was in San Diego and he referred a former police photographer for murders and crimes to me who was not working because of, because <laughs> of COVID, um, not as much. So she came out on her off time and we did that and we had the bike inspected to, so we could tell how long, he, how fast he was going. Um, oh God, sorry. Something just creeped. Oof these bugs um yeah so oh do, yeah i know it's it's actually very sad keith was a good good boy but he won't stop me from doing that like i can't stop no paint marks on the bike the the marks were on the body so the body from the waist down took the brunt of the impact everywhere so that was a problem but um i think i got over the trauma because when we got here and we were across the street over there by those trees. There's a big fuzzy palm tree over there. And so I pulled up there, Arlene pulled up behind me, Carol pulled up behind that, and Jason pulled up behind us, Jason and Kenna. And so we were over there. So we were out here with Keith for four hours. Um, and he was here and we were there and we weren't allowed near him. However, at the time, um, some weird photographer got out here, a stringer, who takes pictures of accidents as such and sells the pictures, he was allowed to take pictures of the body, but me and Jason couldn't come over to see Keithy. So we were stopped, but that guy had taken pictures. Um, anyhow, that's what happened. There were at least 10 people around him right here on the one video. So there was about 10 people. None of those people, I mean, I know George, and I know biker guy down there, the guy with the black mailbox. Um,
Like, how the fuck are you going to run off the road? I mean, how are you going to run off the road? Anyway, biker guy down there, he was invested. <laughs> he changed the story. He didn't actually know that we were here, I don't think, because I asked for information and he described the ground in a different way than I saw because we were here. So what, what we think happened is Keithy's artery was cut in his leg, so the femoral artery, and the nurse across the street, Kimberly and Melody, the nursing student and her brother, they were all working on Keith and we were told there wasn't much blood on the road. The monk lady came out, but the police stopped her. Anyway, she started praying over here and they prayed around him, but there wasn't much blood on the road. But biker guy was very invested in telling me the road was covered in blood, which it was not. You can still see the stains from the gasoline on the bike, but you cannot see anything from the blood. It was like minimal. And so he was invested in saying that. So either he didn't see it, wasn't here, only saw what he wanted to see or made shit up. I don't know. But the story changed a few times. I asked him if he saw the truck that was described as pulling over and saying, I'm sorry, I didn't see him. He said, no, I didn't see it. Then 10 minutes later, he said, yes, I did see it. So there, you know, with people, he could be that he just didn't recite it correctly, but I don't know. I'm, oop, I'm, <laughs> this, this hill is terrible. Anyway, Marvin came out last night, look, and reinforced the cross. I was out here. See the cross? See this? These? Okay, the cross was wobbly and it was right here. It was coming apart. And I told Marvin, I texted him, he was out of town. And him and Jason put the cross out. Marvin dug the big hole, started the whole project. And um, they put like 100 pounds of cement in the ground there. And he just did that. Anyway, it's very sweet. Um, yeah. How do you, well, I think he bled inward. I think he bled inward to his clothes because he wears shorts and then his jeans over them. So that's what they're thinking, but he really didn't bleed on the road. It could be something else, but that's what they said. Or he could have had a stroke. I mean, but they think he caught it from the mailbox. But anyway, Marvin put this up. Some weird Cyclops tried to steal the headphones from the thing and Deanna was standing here, it was pitch black. It was like 10 o'clock at night and we were waiting for one of Keith's friends and <laughs> Right behind me, Deanna's like, why is that rock moving? And I'm like, I don't know why that rock's moving. Anyway, it was this weird, like, guy dressed as a girl wearing a skirt with, like, really weird eyes. And he looked like he should have been a cyclops. There's, there you go. You can see the road is flat. Those bikers don't go off the road, so. But anyway, the, the person was over there so we saw them and then I kind of backed away from them then I noticed the guy was trying to take Keithy's headphones I'm like don't take fucking Keithy's headphones don't be doing that anyway he put them back he came back with them because I was gonna like grab his skirt and pull him to the ground <laughs> I'm like don't take my kids headphones they're not yours anyway he left he gave them back so that was nice he understood but you can see there was the traffic it's so pretty these nice um these buddhist monks here she came out and took deanna and i in and she was praying for keithy which is really nice because when you know when you're in an accident you want to have love around you regardless of what what um religion it is or what what belief system it is i was just glad people were with keith and they were praying around him i had a few i had a few people who came up on the accident tell me that but still, I'm trying to understand how you run into this mailbox off a straight road like this. And on the inside of it too. So you're running, you're going in this way. You're going that way. Like why? Why would you do that? Yeah, no, something's not right. I know it's not right. A really nice young girl down the street, like by the light down there, you can kind of see a gas station. Anyway, the nice girl, I left a note. I just took envelopes and threw them all under because they all have like gated um they all have gated uh they all have gated yards you know locked so i went and i threw it under the thing she read the note and she texted a few of her neighbors that do have cameras so i'm looking forget where the accident was i'm looking who was behind keith on the road on the way up so I'll know what happened because it could be one of two things. I kind of get a feeling like someone was on his back. And since the black mailbox there, he said he saw the whole thing. 
And Keith just decided to ride up the line and ride on the curb and just fucking go off the road, which I find very freaking interesting. Um, anyway, uh, sorry, I just saw something down there. I think probably somewhere around here is where Keith got shoved off the road or somebody stopped in front of him and then he veered that way to avoid hitting them. Short stopped in front like that. But yeah, it was one o'clock in the afternoon. He left the bike shop at one. So that's all I know. I got the call from Jason at like 1.40 who didn't know what happened, but these people, they don't have their electricity hooked up yet because they just built this house. So their cameras weren't hooked up, which is just, see, look, they got cameras ready to be hooked up that are not hooked up because we talked to that guy. So yeah, that's what we did. That is what we did. But you can see, literally Keith was driving this flat. So somebody needs to explain to me how he actually ended up like just driving off a flat street. That's like you and your car. Why are you driving off a flat street? So the fact that maybe, um, I don't know about this new police person um, who we're talking to tomorrow because he's been investigating, told me he went to the gas stations to get the footage. I went first because nobody did and I asked him to hold it. Um, I asked him to hold the um, footage in the gas station till the police could get there because the first guy just kept telling me, you know, nonsense and craziness. So I was like, whatever. And I'm going to my car. I'm trying to get my keys out of my pocket. Anyway, that this new officer, I feel at least he acknowledges. Yeah, there could be something with the, my, the motorcycle mal malfunctioning as well. Um, but I feel like I'm putting you on the hood of my car for one second. I feel like um, the new officer Oh my God, I gotta get my pants. <laughs> I locked my keys in my... Yeah, the cars are driving fast, that's true. But um, still, still, we've all gone fast in the car and we don't just veer off the road, right? I have to stand in the shade. Oh my God, it's fucking hot. See, neighborhood watch everywhere, but nobody was watching. What's that? Little doodleberry. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I'm getting in my car now. Oh my God, it's so freaking hot. Okay, now I'm obnoxiously in my car before I shut this off. Oh, wait. Oh, whew, geez. It says it is 90 degrees. It's a full moon, I know. Full moon, um, edged him over, maybe didn't see him. Yeah, absolutely. But somebody saw something, so they need to... Um, I just ran out in my like day face, not my online face <laughs> because I had to put the flyers out. Um, you know, oh God, I can try to get a good angle here. There are no good angles. Anyway, I'm gonna shut this off for now because I have to actually drive and I can't stand this and I can't drive and do this. But yeah, the weight of the mailbox, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there was. They fixed the mailbox since. I have pictures of it before, but that guy fixed it. Um, yeah. So, no, we'll figure it out. I just wanted to show you because so many people are emailing me. I wanted to show you guys. Wait, I'll leave the car on. I'll come out here and finish blathering. Um, <laughs> I, I can't sit in the sun. I got to sit in some shade. Um, anyway, there were so many people were asking me. So I thought I would show you what happened because some people are like, oh, I read he hit a pole. I'm like, no, it was a mailbox and two poles, but you can see how far down the road he went. And I wanted everybody to see like how flat the road was so that you guys can kind of think in your own minds. It's really weird not to be able to see it or feel it, but I knew something wasn't right. So that is what I'm doing. No, it was, it was one o'clock in the afternoon. It was as hot as this. This is um, like almost six o'clock here, I think. So, I mean, and look, it's still blatantly sunny and bloody hot. Yeah, so, I, yeah, I, well, I'm sure we'll get answers. I mean, if I have to wait till I die, I guess I have to wait till I die. But I'm pretty sure somebody had to see a camera somewhere or notice something. Um, I was told he was going anywhere from 45 to 55 miles an hour, and the speed limit is like 50, so that's about right. 
Um, yeah, maybe someone will make an anonymous call. Keep it anonymous. Yeah, oh, totally. Keep it anonymous. I don't care who calls. I just want to know what happened. But yeah, when I had the bike inspected at how the bike hit the ground, how far above his body it was, what was broken on the bike and what happened, the injuries from the bike had to do with when it hit the ground and it was only like 20 feet above his head, which means if he was going like 100 or if anybody's going like 100, basically the bolts come out of the front part of the bike. Like there's certain things you can tell because I, I had somebody who specializes in those bikes come and look at the bike, look under it, look to see what it hit. He could tell what was cement, what was happening when it was out of control, that kind of thing. Um, so it was no more than 60 miles an hour, which this street there are, you know, is fine. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know, but I can't stop myself. So this is what I do. I come here, there were skid marks, yes. Um, not from his bike, but there were marks where he went over the curb and where he went off the curb and then back over the curb. So it was like he was trying to gain um, control. That's what I feel. I feel like he was trying to gain control of the bike and then probably you react. I think once his leg hit the um, mailbox, I think maybe you go into shock. M my cousin cut her foot off with a lawnmower, with a ride on lawnmower. And she said like, she didn't feel anything. She just like went into shock, right? So you don't react the same, everything slows down. You don't, you know, you don't think the same way. Anybody who's been in shock or given birth, which is shocking, you know that. But yeah, so what, hopefully, if anybody is in the Chatsworth area on July 29th, you know, around that time, one o'clock, 1245 I think they George told me they left the bike shop around one but if anybody was out here remembers anything if you if you know anything there is a number I should put the number up here there is a number and we may actually have to hire a lawyer to get the tape off the street corners and because they just you know they're not interested in one kid I mean he, you know he's somebody's kid no one cares I care so that's what I'm doing anyway yeah I will not stop no, I haven't lost my mind. I'm dealing with it. I deal, I cry on my own time, but when I come out here, I'm focused. Deanna's helping me. Every time I go to the houses, Deanna comes with me either on the phone or in person. It was a little bit hot for her today, but she's been around to every one of these doors. I'm hiring a lawyer. I'm waiting to talk to the police tomorrow and wait, then I go straight to the lawyer after that. I have to see what they said. I have to document it and then I have to approach it. Um, but I'm doing also my own stuff, talking to the neighbors, getting it on the news, doing whatever we can do, because I just want to know what happened to him. That's all. Even if it was of biker, um, his own nonsense, which it wasn't, but even if it were that, I would like to know that. I can't, I don't think you can decide after 30 minutes of somebody being dead on the ground when you show up and that's your investigation and that's your conclusion, which was interesting because I'm going to say this again. Um, let me I'll sit on the street here. I'll say this again, the first police officer on the scene, or the one that we talked to, me and Jason, um, he basically said that it was Keith, a uh, single bike accident, okay? So when I went back the next day, now I shouldn't have to go back the next day to actually canvas the neighborhood to find out who saw what, but I did, and I ran into cute Melody, the nursing student who was helping Keith and her brother Robert, and then the neighbor Kimberly, and Melody told me a truck stopped and got out, guy with broken English, and said, I'm sorry, I didn't see him. So to me, that implies that's not Keith's fault. That is someone else's fault. So anyhow, when I went back to the police station the following day after I wrote everything up, he said, yeah, I didn't know that. No one told me that. So my question to you, if you're a cop, an officer, and you are not like my friend Stacy, because she absolutely is not this kind of police officer, detective. If you, if you are on the scene of somebody, you're going to make up a story based on what you think because nobody told you, your coworkers didn't tell you that somebody stopped and said, I'm sorry, I didn't see him and you're not going to mention that. So if I was somebody who maybe was a little bit more uneducated or more like fallen apart at the time and couldn't think, I may not come back and say anything or check anything. I may never have found that out. So I am saying right now, lesson learned with anything, with um, doctor's appointments, with diagnoses, with death, with anything, do your own research because these people can't be bothered all the time. Again, I have a good, good cop, Stacy, 
detective, she doesn't do that. But that initial guy on the scene, he just kept doing it. Then he told me, um, which I've said, but he explained to me that I might need to grieve and stop looking around. That's not going to fucking happen until I know what happened to my son, period. But the fact that you tried to say it was Keith and then the other officers above you at the scene knew different, but you made up a story just to placate us like we're dummies. And then on top of it to, I said this last night, I'm probably reiterating everything, but on top of it to have one of the mayor's representatives, volunteers, tell my son not to say it was a hit and run is completely fucked up and not professional and boo on Garcetti's office for sending out such dingling who says stupid shit like that at the scene of somebody whose child is on the road when she wasn't fucking there unless she caused the accident just saying because as much as it could be what she thinks it could also be what I think so um yeah no well she was sent out like under her her the guise of the mayor's office to do that but my point is I will find out. Um, I know John doesn't, well, I can't speak for John, but I know he's secretly, he knows what happened, but he can't like grab the evidence. And Jason knows what happened. Jason, Jason drove his car and his bike up here ad nauseum, like 50 times every day, every night since Keith passed. He comes up the street on the same bike that Keith had because he has the same bike, different color. Anyway, he comes up and down the street. He comes in his car. He comes with Kenna. He comes with Lila. They come up and down the street. There's just no way you're going to run off the road randomly. It could be a motorcycle malfunction. That's for sure. Um, that could be it too. But I am waiting to talk to the officer to see. I have um, Keith's paperwork from there, but I don't have how he paid. And there was nothing found on the body with payment. So... It's just weird. Jason says, no way. So my Jason says, Abs I'm trying to hide. There's a lady coming up the street. I don't want to get her the house <laughs> standing. Um, I'm standing so I don't get her in the picture. There's a cute dog walking up the street. Anyway, um, yeah, no, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. But I just don't think I'm going to settle down and... So to all the people that email support, thank you so much. And to all the people that think I've lost my mind, um, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> if it was your kid, you'd want to know the truth. Even if your kid was responsible, you would still look to find the truth. So I'm looking to see what happened. But I wanted to give you guys a view of the neighborhood. Um, I tried to Google Earth it because sometimes people Google Earth after crimes and stuff. And the people that were on the street at the time, this street only goes to 2019. There are other streets that go to 2020. This one only to 2019. So I have the street, but I can't see anything that happened on that day because it doesn't go. So having said that, having said that, I wanted to show you guys the way the street moved so you could see um, where Keith was traveling and just how flat it was and just maybe how that doesn't make sense that he just went off the road for no reason because that doesn't make sense. I think it was twofold. I think someone came up behind and someone came to the side. That's what I think. I don't know, I don't know what it was because it's speculation and I can't feel it, but I know somebody came from the left because the left leg was damaged, the right leg was damaged, um, and his legs, he's 6'4", so his legs were real long, so the car, whatever it was probably hit the leg, not the bike, just enough to throw him a little bit off over here. So I, you know, I have no idea. I'm not, I'm reserving judgment at the moment, but I'm getting bits and pieces of information. Um, yeah, who's the people from the Cadillac? Wait, what's the Cadillac? Because there was a report of a Cadillac that pulled up. Oh yeah, I told you that. So George is with Keithy as Keithy's passing and somebody pulls up to George in a Cadillac and says, on the side of the road and says, dude, dude, were you coming from wheels in motion? And Keithy says, I mean, Keithy, George says, yes. And they say, what's the name of your friend? George tells him Keith. The guy gets on his phone, tries to hand him something and hand him the phone and say, you need to talk to this lawyer. Like right there. We're talking five minutes after Keith hit the ground. Kind of weird. So that's a little bit suspect too. Yeah, I think you need to do this in, especially in broad daylight. I do do it in broad daylight. I know the biker guy over there is probably tuned in, doesn't like what I'm saying, but um, whatever. Anyway, also Keithy's cousins, we went to all of the pesticide companies around here because one of the trucks was reported as an Orkin pest control truck is the one that stopped. Um, and the, the 
broken English person stepped out and said, I'm sorry I didn't see him. I have a video as Keith has hit the ground and the other vans go by of a van that was already parked prior, half on the curb, half off the curb. And we're gonna look into the bike shop. So there you go. Um, it was a de obviously delivering for some company. Yeah, I'm looking, uh, absolutely looking for everything. But thank you guys. Um, yeah, I've got to check every everything. Uh, yeah, there was a poor kid two days two days ago died one street down here. You can see how freaking flat the street is. Like, where are all these people dying on the street? Like, it's flat streets. And he was on the curb. That was also on Citizens app. His name was Andy something. <sighs> something with an H. Andy H. Anyway, he just suddenly, they say the pole closed lined him. You know, how did he, you can see where the poles are. Why are people ending up on the poles? Why are they ending up on the mailboxes inside people's things? Definitely. No, I know. We got to check the bike store. I have to wait to talk to, I have to wait to talk to the um, investigator tomorrow morning so I can hear what that is. Um, no, they don't have the attorney's card. George was too pissed off. And then George chased the camera guy away too because he was, he, he was screaming at them. So Stacy is looking for me to see if she can find who that guy was if he shows up. Because there's all those YouTubers where they film fatal accidents and stuff all over LA and put it on the internet. Um, which it is what it is because the body, the soul isn't in the body so they can do that. Um, I suspect if you didn't have faith, it might drive you crazy. And if I find out who he is, I might go punch him in the face. That's for sure. Or, you know, take pictures of him after I smack him on the curb. Oh God, is that a threat? Did I do that? Um, the video, uh, where did we put the video? There's a website called, well, the ring video is not on there, but there's a, um, yeah, neighborhood watch never comes out to really watch, do they? Um, <laughs> the, um, um, the video's on a website called California Motorcycles Down, and it would be on the 29th. That was the guy, Louie, driving towards it, saw the bike, didn't turn the camera off as he saw Keith, but you can see people around him. Now, I got somebody's ring camera going in the other direction that shows a van pulled over, not the van that's in Louie's video. So it's interesting, there was a white van that went before that, and they pulled over, they ran right up on the curb, pulled over just right in front of Keith's body, but out of the the, the other guy's camera thing. So it's very interesting. Anyway, there you go, you guys. Um, I will talk to you later. This has been my little short video right now because, oh, I know someone hit him. I know somebody, he went off the road. I, that's in the beginning of the video. You can look, I, I show where he went off the road. But I just wanted to show you how flat a road it was so that you understood because Keith was extremely agile, not stupid. Um, and Jason couldn't run his bike off to save his life. Like he was trying to run it off the road and couldn't do it. So um, that was your outside, <laughs> my outside voice. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm probably on film. They probably got me on film out here, but not everybody else. Anyway, you guys, um, the website, no, it's a Facebook. It's a, oh, it's a Facebook page called Cali CA Motorcycles Down, CA Motorcycles Down. And it shows all the accidents. But if you go to the date, the 29th, it shows Keithy's. Somebody was filming it. And there's other people that have reached out. So that's good. Um, a couple of years. A couple of years. Jason's been about five years. Keithy's been about two years. Um, the bike was brand new. Yep. So there you go. Anyway, bye, you guys. I am now signing off so I can drive home in rush hour traffic and perhaps do some laundry. Okay, bye you guys, Mwah. thanks for listening. I wanted to show you because so many people are emailing me about where things happen and what happened. So I just showed you the road. So like, it's also documenting it so I don't forget what I'm saying. And it's there. Okay, bye you guys.